Let's talk a little bit about federalism, which is uh, covered in the third chapter of our textbook and which um, after the Constitution I think is one of those foundation issues. Basically federalism distributes power between the federal government and the states and allows the federal government and the states to share certain other powers that they both have. Um, the reason for this was obvious. The United States was a country in which the 13 colonies and then the 13 early states really wanted to retain some autonomy for themselves. They didn't want to give up a lot of things to the federal government. And so um, federalism allowed for these regional differences. Remember, you had some states in the north that were very different, not slaveholding states in the south that had plantation economies and, and slavery. And that alone uh, made such a huge difference between them. Um, what you also have to understand is that um, in the struggle between giving certain powers to states and others to the central government, the writers of, this, of the second constitution in Philadelphia um, inserted an article, and I have that right here in front of me. Um, it is basically called often the supremacy uh, clause of the constitution. And it declares that federal law um, takes precedence really over all forms of state law. No government at the local or state level can make or enforce any law that conflicts with any provision of the Constitution. Uh, acts of Congress, treaties, or other rules, regulations, etc., that are issued by the president, um, the executive branch of the federal government, and presumably, therefore, also uh, Congress. So when we get into a discussion about um, how states' rights. Um, what is interesting to remember is that um, states' rights only go so far when they begin to undermine uh, or interfere with or contradict federal law. They basically become uh, null and there will be uh, an enforcement of the federal law. The reason that um, this is important is because when the southern states decided to um, basically separate from the United States and secede and create the Confederacy. Uh, um, the uh, reason given by them was not that they wanted to have slaves, uh, of course, because that wasn't so socially acceptable uh, even in those days. But they said it was a states' rights issue. Nowadays, when there is, in the past, at least recent past, discrimination, for example, against minorities in voting and so on, um, states have said, well, the federal government really doesn't have the authority to interfere because we have a thing called states' rights. Unfortunately, states' rights often has been used to basically flaunt uh, federal law to con contradict it or um, violate or undermine federal law. And so the reason why um, we have in this Constitution this supremacy clause and, and continuous cases, I mean, it's not a very clear-cut definition of what exactly is the authority of the federal government uh, at all times on all things, and so there are court cases, and the extent to which the federal government has become the dominant force in the United States in modern times was gradual, it was incremental, um, it came from changes in technology and from the fact that the country grew very big and um, essentially a lot of things couldn't be done by states and so you want a good national defense, you want a good interstate highway system, you want um, a national airport, air, air traffic control system and so on, the federal government does it. If you want to regulate poisonous toys and food products that are being imported, you can't do that state by state because you know they can slip them in through a state that has very weak laws and then they get spread out throughout the country because we basically have uh, fairly free interstate commerce. So the federal government has had to assume more and more responsibility and you will find that in this uh, uh, discussion that we have in our book. There are lots of different forms of federalism and so on and the federal government obviously plays a big role. It contributes money and support when there are hurricanes. Um, Louisiana and other states come to the federal government or Iowa goes to the federal government when we have floods and asks for assistance uh, homeland security and other issues also are ones where the states go to the federal government. And in this period of economic crisis, in the uh, two, year 2009 and, and, and a little bit beyond, the states are hoping that the federal government will in fact help them out quite a bit. So federalism 
very interesting, very important, um, and also very complicated and, and changing over time. Thanks.